What's up guys, and welcome back to DCA. Today what we're gonna do is talk about Bitcoin. Is the market cycle over? So the way we're going to do this analysis is by looking at the 20 week moving average as a historical measure of support for Bitcoin, as well as what has occurred when we have reached a prior all time high price over a period of time. So in other words, we made our all time high in April of 2021, and then we got back to that all time high in October. So we're going to see what has happened historically in the past when we have got back to a prior all time high. So we're doing this all to determine whether we should be concerned right now that the bull market is over or whether this is normal price behavior. So the first thing you'll note is we started forming an uptrend in March of 2020 related to the COVID capitulation event. We came down to around $3,800. And since that time, we have been moving up along this trend line. We hit it in June. We hit it then in September. And now we have hit this line yet again in December. So realistically, this is going to be an important line for us to hold. But you'll coincidentally note that this line is also forming right along the 20 week moving average. So historically, we have said many times on the channel, the 20 week moving average has acted as the general line of support for Bitcoin in the setting of a bull run. If you can hold the 20 week moving average, the cycle will continue. Historically, when you drop below the 20 week moving average, this indicates that at minimum, at minimum, you need several months, if not more, to sort of reset until you can get back above. Now, you'll note that in May of this year, in May, we dropped below the 20 week moving average on the 15th. And what did that result in? We went from the 15th until August 8th, where we were below the 20 week moving average. So a total of 85 days. So we needed approximately three months to reset in order to get back above and to set a new all time high price. OK, now another thing you'll notice that we essentially hit this all time high price here on October the 20th and have since then kind of been moving down. We were able to get back above for a short amount of time when we got up to around 68,000. But in general, we've been on a you know more micro level downtrend. So what we want to do today is look at Bitcoin and what has been its historical price action with relation to the 20 week moving average and with relation to Bitcoin hitting a prior all time high. So a good place to start will just be back here in 2012. And you'll note that during the course of a bull run, we came down and we tested the 20 week moving average in October of 2012. From there, we held the 20 week moving average. We held it as support and then the bull market continued. OK, we topped out in, you know, April of 2013 during the first peak of 2013. We came down and we got below the 20 week moving average. So from the end of June until August, about the 23rd, when we got back above the 20 week moving average, we came and we tested the 20 week moving average again, held it as support and then went to our parabolic run where we peaked sort of right here at around $11, $1,200. We then started moving down and sideways and we fell below the 20 week moving average in February of 2014. So when we got below in February of 2014, you'll notice that we did shortly thereafter get back above the 20 week moving average. OK, but the critical component of this is we were not able to get any separation and particularly we were not able to get back to our prior all time high. So it just sort of stayed below the levels that it was at prior to going below this first time. So you can see that we never got back above six hundred and eighty five dollars. All right. And what you would like to see if you hold the 20 week as support is holding in a support and then continuing upwards. Now, in this case, the trend, the 20 week moving average trend was moving down. OK, so it was moving down and we were moving down the 20 week along with it. Now, 
from the time that we fell below here in February, we stayed below the 20 week moving average essentially for about 470 days when we were finally able to at least break above once and we broke above and we were not able to hold it as support the first time we tested it. But then on October of 2015, so about a year and a half later, we did get above. And from there, we started testing the 20 week as support methodically. We tested it essentially here in March of 2016. We rode right along it and note this time, the 20 week is trending upwards, okay? So we test and hold it here. We kicked off of it in May, went up to this $800 level, got rejected, came back down to the 20 week, which is still trending up. And we ride right along it in an upwards trend this time. All right. And now you'll notice this is when we get to the prior all time high. And this is important because this reflects the position that we're in right now. So we get to this prior all time high at the level where we held the 20 week as support. We got back to this $1,100 level, $1,120. And notice what happens here. We get rejected, okay? So we go on a fairly large price correction at this point. So we go down approximately 30%, all right? From there, we go back up and we get just above this $1,100 level very similar to what you just saw with Bitcoin, where we got above that 64,000 level and went up to around 68 to 69,000. Essentially, we get to this higher level and then come down to the 20 week moving average. In fact, we corrected 30% at that time. So we went from this high at around $1,300 all the way down to here at around $929. And importantly, hit the 20 week moving average and we're able to then bounce off and continue the bull run. Now notice, so we're saying we held the 20 week, got to the prior all time high. There was a fair sized correction. We were able to get slightly above the prior all time high. And when we did that, the market needed a correction. It needed a pullback since you're going above a prior all time high. And in fact, we pulled back to the 20 week moving average. Let's compare that to now. So what did we say? We held the 20 week moving average, held it as support. We got some separation. We got to a prior all time high. Once we hit that prior all time high, we had the correction. So we went from around, let's see, we closed right here at around 66,000. We corrected down to around 56,000. From there, we were able to go set a new all time high up to around 69,000 and have since corrected down to the 20 week moving average, just like you saw in 2017. Now, this does not mean that we are definitively going to hold this 20 week moving average. Okay. It does not mean that in the least. What it does mean is there is a historical precedent for this type of price move. We can say that if we are able to hold this moving average, especially now that the moving average is trending upwards, if we can hold it as support, then it is very likely that this will be the impetus to see the market cycle continue in an upwards trend. Now, conversely, if we drop below this 20 week moving average, that is a much more bearish sign. And we could very well see something like we saw in uh, May of this year or significantly worse. You know, I'm not discounting the fact that this could be the start of the bear market. Okay, so we cannot discount the fact that falling below this 20 week moving average could happen. But in the past, this has been the playbook for sort of continuing the bull run. And, you know, we can see this trend actually continues in other places. So let's go from here. You can see that when we got to this prior all time high, look what happened when we got to it. We got to the all time high, fell down. So we came from around 19,000 all the way down to 16,000. Then we were able to go set a new all time high, albeit, you know, a smaller one, just like you're seeing right now. 
we set this prior all-time high and then yet again have a correction okay so this has basically happened every time that we've got back to a prior all-time high we go on a price correction and it's played out for the third time now we get to the all-time high we have a correction we go slightly above then a bigger correction and then continue forward is what we want to see if bitcoin is to remain along the path that it has historically been on in this setting so what i'm saying is is that it's not that you should not be worried there's you know there's good reason to raise your alarms right now but it's to be patient you want to see if we're able to hold this 20 week moving average okay don't panic you shouldn't be at the point where you're panic selling right now in fact this could be one of the most premium times to be getting into the market that is not financial advice i'm simply telling you that you know in the past we have seen this happen before this is not something new and in the past this has been the setting where we continue along the bull run so that's it for this one guys if you guys like this type of content hit like and subscribe if you're interested in the DCA index risk model, you can head over to the Telegram channel and sign up for it. I will send it to you within 24 hours. This is a model which indicates where bull markets are reaching a peak and where bear markets are reaching a bottom. You can see that essentially this model has demonstrated the peak in 2013, both peaks, 2017, this market cycle top, and 2021 during this peak. Right now we're sitting at around a 38. The scale goes from zero up to hundred. We also have this index model for numerous large cap altcoins. So if you're interested in this, head over to the Telegram channel. You can sign up for it there. And until next time, as usual, see you.